Good morning, everyone, or afternoon. Uh, well, I'm back with another tutorial on wind steps. What I'm going to do in this tutorial is to show you how to investigate unidimensionality and local independence using wind steps, which is a Roche measurement software package. Now, uh, as you see, my wind steps is already open, and I'm going to uh, call out to file here. I go from file and I have quite a lot of uh, uh, files here and I'm gonna just click on uh, Rosh text test this one is fine. Um, so uh, this file in this file um, I have quite a few items which have been answered by a few uh, like more than a hundred students. So I'm going to click enter and another enter. So the software is run. You see, person reliability is 0.87 uh, and separation is 2.63, meaning that uh, items have been able to differentiate between more than two levels of uh, ability, ability in persons. And of course, we have got uh, three basically more than three levels of uh, item difficulty in our items. Uh, so overall I would say that things look sort of healthy. Now I'm wondering if the test that we have developed is unidimensional for this group of students or not. And as you know, psychometric unidimensionality means whether uh, the test is uh, testing or assessing one specific dimension. Now what I'm going to do is just click anywhere on uh, the interface of WinSteps and you can get this uh, table or, or uh, this menu and I'm going to click on unidimensionality and this pops out. Now I have to just fit it in into this uh, table here so that everything will be uh, visible. Now. Uh, how to interpret table 23 is important. First of all, you will see that we've got you know this this um, line here which reads total row score or row variance in observations, which is 33.9. Is it good or bad? Well, um, we have to actually interpret it uh, with reference to the rest of the information which has been output it for us here. So let me go through these quickly and tell you how to make sense of these. So the variance explained by measures is about 18. That's by uh, people and items. Uh, if, if you add them up together, 8.3 plus 10.6, you will get 18.9. So overall, we've got 18.9 eigenvalue units which have been explained by our uh, person measures and item measures and the row variance unexplained is 15 eigenvalues. What does that mean? We, we've got to compare uh, well the first cut that means uh, these two are almost the same. The, the amount of variance which is not not very much the same actually, but they're uh, pretty close. That means the amount of variance which is explained by Rush measurements and the amount of variance which is explained by other sources of variation, which could be anything that we actually did not mean to test, uh, are around the same area. So is it is it a little bit of a red flag? I would say yes, it is. Uh, because look, it's, it's 55 percent more than 55 percent slightly, and this is around 42 percent, which is quite significant. Now, within the these 15 eigenvalues or eigenvalue units, which are not explained by Rush measurement, is is there any substantive structure that we should be worried about? Okay, we're going to look at the first contrast. What does the first contrast mean exactly? So after uh, extracting the rush dimension from our data, what is left there is called residual. The residual is, I mean, has a matrix pretty much like our data. Uh, for example, uh, if you've got 10 
items answered by let's say 100 people uh, we're gonna have a 10 by 100 metrics or spreadsheet uh, by the same token uh, we're gonna have 10 by 100 metrics or spreadsheet of residuals and residual is uh, the uh, observed performance of the students on the item minus what is expected by the Roche uh, model and you'll get the residual. So is there anything substantive and meaningful uh, inside the residuals? What we're going to do to do to uh, to you know investigate whether there is anything meaningful we we should run a principal component analysis on our on the residuals. So it's called principal component analysis of linearized rush residuals um, it's similar to a usual principal component analysis but the interpretation is somehow different uh, I'll try to explain that in a second here uh, so unexplained variance in the first contrast is 3.4 what does that mean uh, it means that there are around three items or three eigenvalues that are creating a sub-dimension in our data that's in other words they have something in common uh, other than the rush dimension that clusters these items together now is it uh, should I be concerned about it I would say probably I should but uh, this is the first piece of evidence and I need to verify my observation further as, as I will go down uh, scroll down these tables so let's keep this in mind 